Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How to increase our gratitude for this gift of a seat in the tariqah and how to prevent internal complaints? Inshallah, those who heard this talk tonight and, and hear this talk on, on YouTube inshaAllah, make your comments, take some notes, put some uh, bullet points of what you understood from the talk and then study it for the week. You know, don't, don't put on a, a tariqah suit for one night or two nights and the rest of the week we become jahal and, and well, all over the place. Spend the whole week in understanding and studying and practicing. Means it's beyond us and how people can sit, hear the talks but they don't really hear them. Because they go out and bother everybody in the room, bother everybody in the association, bother everybody at work and do every kind of thing and, and mischievous thing. And they just occupy a space whether in their living rooms or in the, in the majlis. Means that the one whom hears they study it, they meditate on it and they try their best to implement what's being taught. Because not only the barakah of the teaching that's coming through but the responsibility of what's being taught. So many times the shaykhs wouldn't talk about something. As a result of not talking about it, didn't want the students to be responsible for it. And that what they say is, ignorance is bliss. But when they give a permission to talk, Anyone who heard it is now 100% responsible for it. That they hear the teaching, they hear the criteria, they hear the realities and they can't go to Allah on the day of judgment and say that, oh, we didn't really hear it because they're going to play back a videotape for you. You are the best digital recorder. Your two eyes and what your ears have picked up, it's on a chip in the back of your head is all recorded and records everything your eyes saw and everything your mouth spoke, everything your ears heard. So it means people are responsible for the knowledge. It's not something… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Then you just come and go and, and you can pick and taste from what you like. We're responsible for these realities. That's why the teachers then you take your notes and throughout the week implement them. And you see how difficult it is to implement a teaching and how some people can hear something and that evening they'll do exactly the opposite. Not even but five seconds, five minutes they'll try to do something opposite of what they heard because their nafs is in so much authority on that chair. So then you get an understanding of who's really sitting on your chair. Even when you're listening to the zikr, who's sitting on that chair? If your soul sitting on that chair while the zikr is taking place, the soul is hearing it, understanding, writing to the ability that it can, putting its notes, understanding and then telling itself, this is a sharat from the heavens and I will implement that reality to the best of my ability. When the nafs is sitting on the chair and it hears the talk, what is it doing? Absolutely not, no way, what is he talking about? 
in that but five minutes the association and somebody will post something. And it's the exact opposite of what was talked about, not to do and they do it because the sickness. Then you understand who's sitting on your chair, that's the danger where people think, oh yeah my soul's sitting on the chair. Mm. Most are not, most the nafs is sitting on the chair because they hear it and they actually do the opposite. They come against it, they don't even want to study it, they want to pretend like it didn't even happen for the whole week, they didn't even have to hear it. That's why I ask where's the feedback because all the nafs are sitting on the chairs and say, absolutely nothing shaykh, no feedback. <laughs> why? The soul's understood, they go deep into it. So this gives us our understanding that's what tafakkur is, is to sit and make your tafakkur. We say, I can't make tafakkur, well because maybe your nafs is sitting on the chair, how's it you can't make tafakkur? You can't sit and understand what you did wrong for the day and at night you can't make muhasaba, well because you're, the soul is on the ground probably and the nafs is sitting on the chair and say, absolutely you're not going to make any tafakkur tonight nor tomorrow either. <laughs> so then you go, okay now I know who's sitting on that chair. Because he's not letting you to do that. But you think that your soul reality sits on that chair and at night you said, I heard from the shaykh, I'm going to make tafakkur and I'm doing it every night. Every time I make my salah, I connect just a few minutes to dress me from your light, Ya Rabbi I'm going to sujood, take away my difficulties, everything, everything for them is a moment to be in tafakkur. Because their soul sits upon the chair and the soul wants to receive these lights and energies. When they come to realize their nafs is sitting on the chair, they can't do any of it. They can't give without shaking. They can't meditate and absolutely not. They pray, forget it, they say they can't even pray. All the practices and the teachings were to burn them. So the one who meditates and begin to make their tafakkur, the one whom gives charity, the one whom goes out and gives service, what happens? It's a fire on his shaitan. As soon as he meditates it's a fire coming onto the shaitan. So even if he's on the ground and his soul been beaten and thrown off the chair, as soon as he sits in the corner and meditates. A fire from heavens is coming upon the shaitan sitting on that chair and begin to burn and burn them until what they call the seat is hot. You know don't get in the hot seat because as soon as you're doing practices that seat is too hot for shaitan to sit on and immediately he moves. And when they do their practices and they give their zakat, they give their mawlid, they do their practices, they go out and give food. They do their muraqaba, their khidmat and they're putting out articles, what happens? Like a fire, have you seen like a lightning come down upon the chair, now their nafs is burning. Burning, burning, burning and their nafs is like, oh this is too hot for me to sit on this chair either and the both of them get off the chair and the soul can immediately sit on it with no problem. And every time it's doing more practices the fire is burning upon them. And the soul begins to emanate so much energy on that chair of authority that they can't dare to approach it without being burnt. So these, these practices are real, the awrads are real, the etiquettes are real, the salah is real, everything that Prophet brought for us is real. Most who accepted Islam they're in a state of three people sitting on the chair. That we described in the levels of the nafs. Why levels of the nafs? Because the first level the, the, the nafs is not even sitting on the chair, he lets shaitan sit on it. The second level of the nafs, the, shait, the nafs got up and says, oh no I gotta sit on this chair. And realizes, maybe we shouldn't be so bad, let me sit more than you. And then as the nafs is growing, 
And if it grows, it will give an authority to the soul. Then the three will be sitting there fighting for who can sit onto the chair. What happened now is that Allah sees their struggle, says, ah these three guys they're never gonna win because this one doesn't do their awrah, doesn't do their practices, doesn't follow the guidance. It's going to be three for one chair all the time, fight, fight, fight. The only rahmah that Allah give to them, the greatest rahmah is Ramadan. What happens in Ramadan? Why is it the great reset for the nation? Because that's the month in which so much light and so much power that immediately the nafs is like, we're not going to break his Ramadan. We, he is going to die before he doesn't do his Ramadan. As a result shaitan says, that seat is not anything I want to be sitting on. And the shaitan gets off the chair, stays off the chair for the 30 days because of the fasting burns him. The nafs willingly turns to the soul and says, you sit now because of Ramadan and make sure that we get up to eat because if you put us through too much hunger it's going to burn me too much. The Ramadan is the, is the great reset for the Muslim nation every year. All of your corruption for the 12 months when Ramadan comes it's the reset in which the soul can at least sit for 30 days. Where it was struggling, it was, it was a, like a captive hostage. It finally gets to come up, sit on the chair and enjoy and you find Ramadan everybody's generous, everybody's giving, everybody trying to pray, everybody trying to recite. Why? Because of the rahmah and the mercy and the power that Allah is sending. As a result the soul is empowered, not shaitan and nor the nafs want to be on that chair. And the nafs doesn't want to interfere with the soul. Least the Ramadan become difficult, they miss their suhoor, they, they, they fast too long. So we see all of these realities and we pray that Allah open for us a greater understanding that do the practices, build the light, build the connection inshaAllah, do the studies, study the path. The worst is the one whom hears it and five seconds later is absolutely not doing anything from what was described. Only fix yourself, never talk to anyone, never say to anyone, where's their hat, where's this, where's their clothes. Judge only yourself and never anyone else. Means this is tariqah, good manners and nahi wa munkar is only for oneself. That once I've perfected myself I have no right to talk or to advise anyone until I have perfected myself and I'm at least fighting against myself. Otherwise become room of hypocrites in which they do nothing for themselves and they keep advising everybody else. Tariqah is not a room for hypocrites, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, can you let us know about the reality of Shaban being the month of our Prophet peace and blessings be upon him? You're out of questions I take it. We've been speaking the whole <laughs> two weeks of Shaban. <laughs> Shaban is… Okay, another Shaban. one related to it. Have the articles, the everything about Shaban. Uh, Sayyidi, the, what's, these are all the talks of Shaban, inshaAllah. Uh, where did that question go? Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum, Sayyidi. <laughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please expand for us the reality of reciting Surah Yasin three times in Laylatul Nisf Shaban? That's better, <laughs> inshaAllah. <laughs> yeah, we have the on Monday, inshaAllah, we'll be having the three Yasins. <clears throat> Has to do with uh, many understandings but inshaAllah from what we understood has to do with the, the reality of the three, div- the three hearts. Means that Allah is a hidden treasure. So we'll say that that Rajab represents the Divinely heart, the hidden treasure, the hidden heart that wants to be known 
because we have to always address these realities with the manners. We can't give a place or a location to Allah So in this school of adab and manners we say that the Divinely heart of La ilaha illallah wants to be known. So one Yaseen based on that reality because Yaseen is the heart of Qur'an. So we want to take the reality of Holy Qur'an which is the heart of Holy Qur'an and they say the heart of Surah Yaseen is Surah Al-Fatiha. So it means that will all bring the realities and the immense reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why you should get the Yaseen book that we put out. It's all about the Muhammadan heart and the heart of Holy Qur'an. Is that when we teach about the house of Allah the lataif of the qalb, then the natural is then the actual description of the heart which is Sayyidina Yaseen, Habibullah and what's flowing from that reality. So you get the book on the realities of Surat Yaseen, you read that to understand that towards the greatness of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Manzil Qur'an the location in which Holy Qur'an is emanating for all of creation and the immensity of that reality that can't even be phantomed and understood. And one Surah Yaseen for the reality of Shabban because Allah wanted to be known and as a result Allah will be known through the best, not the lowest, not the medium, Allah will be known through the best of His creation. That's how we can talk when people say, Shaykh how, how you can say that Prophet is better than everything else? No I didn't say anything. Allah is telling us is that when Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known, He's going to be known through the best of His creation. As a result He created La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah because La ilaha illallah will never be known, there's nothing to see for you. But it's one kalima, one phrase that opens and is self-explanatory. La ilaha illallah will be known in Muhammadun Rasulullah So we recite a Surah Yaseen and Shabban for all of the immensities again of the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah and that the Laylatul Bara is a night in which Allah writing the destinies. When we spend that day and night in fasting and in prayer and worshipness begging Allah forgiveness, So, Ya Rabbi write for us something good, don't write according to my actions, good Lord will be in trouble. Means if Allah is planning on writing based on my actions for the year or for the past year or past the, my whole lifetime, we don't want that. You're begging Allah don't write based on my actions Ya Rabbi but based on forgiveness and based on my love. That don't look to my actions but look to my love for Sayyidina Muhammad Based on that love that I couldn't achieve what I was supposed to achieve that I couldn't do what I was supposed to do Ya Rabbi based on that love write a destiny for me. So they're asking the whole time for forgiveness and they spent the 11 months up to that point doing the milad, doing the maulid, doing the three days a week of celebration, why? To prove it. How you say you love Sayyidina Muhammad and you never sit in the majlis of Salli ala Nabi and then come Shabban, oh, oh Ya Rabbi Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. No, it's the hypocrisy. So tariqah comes and says, no, 11 months and how many days? 29 days? Sit there for Shabban to come. So then Allah verify, Ya Rabbi, I'm, I'm, for all these months I'm doing and asking for forgiveness, I'm asking for this ocean of love, for this way of reality that write for me something good, Ya Rabbi. Your rizq to be good, my faith to be strong, my family to be strong, my community to be strong and then take away from anything from your anger or any of my badness that would have brought your anger and punishment, take those off the books. 
again for the sake of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad imagine the people whom are not taught this way. What is your dialogue with Allah Because we are lawyers in Divinely Presence. Means what? Means that when we go into that presence you have to ask, Ya Rabbi please don't punish. We know the crimes that have been committed. We know what's been written against this servant. We know all of this bad. If you judge based on these actions is the death sentence. But what we're asking is from your rahmah and mercy. What rahmah and mercy are you specifically asking from? The love and intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad in which your holy Qur'an is giving us our dalil that, I will not punish them while they're asking for forgiveness and while that you're in their presence. So they make their durood the sharif and make istighfar and the presence of Prophet is with them. So when these lawyers they know how to deal in the Divine Court, that's why they come upon the earth and begin to teach people, be careful, what's going to be your argument? If you weren't taught love, you weren't taught intercession, you weren't taught about and you denied that, no, no we don't need all of this about Muhammadun Rasulullah What is it that you would dare to open your mouth to ask Allah Why would He not punish you for your actions? Why? What do you say that, don't punish me for what reason? There's nothing anyone can say because I'm just a good person, Ya Rabbi, if you were good then your actions would be good. So without this element of love and intercession there's nothing that anyone can say to Allah And if you're going to present yourself and your case based on yourself and your deeds, your actions it's not going to work. So this is the, the rahmah of Allah that uh, describes for people that stick with these law firms. The tariqahs, Naqshbandiyat al-Aliya is a huge law firm in Divinely Presence with 40 huge sort of big judges of the Divinely Presence in which they came onto this earth and they gave immense knowledges, immense realities to safeguard the servants from the difficulties of the grave and the journey upon this earth to their final destination. So we see the immense rahmah when Allah puts us in a way of love and, and compassion, how much we can use this compassion to save ourselves. The one whom walks a path based on love and compassion will be able to use that love and compassion to safeguard themselves from Allah's anger and judgment upon them inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum Salaam uh, Sorry Sayyidi we got a little confused in yesterday's talk. What did you mean when you said Mecca is in Medina and Medina is in Mecca? Hmm. That was the reality of Lam Alif. That was the, the questioner had asked about Basirat Lam Jalala. By Izzati wa Jalalihi, by the might and majesty and that's when we describe the alif and the secret of lam, lam alif. <coughs> La ilaha illallah and the lam is what will speak to all of creation known as Muhammadun Rasulullah So this reality is then the whole of the tariqahs based on that and knowledges and the true knowledge of marifah is based on your understanding of alif and lam. If in life you think that you're always approaching Allah and one day you'll know something about Muhammadun Rasulullah you're wrong, you're never going to reach a reality because Allah is a hidden treasure. Hence the alif goes behind, alif hides its reality because doesn't want anybody at the door. 
where everybody coming to directly think they're connecting with Allah and that they're becoming because then it become La ilaha illallah and you. But it's La ilaha illallah connected to Muhammadun Rasulullah So that reality in which Allah is directing the servant that, come to me and when I find acceptance in your ascension and moving towards my reality, I will send you to the presence of Muhammadun Rasulullah and I'm a hidden treasure remaining hidden. So then people who don't know that reality, they go and want to be 20 days in Mecca and I think maybe one day in Medina and fly out because they think they're going to Mecca and that they are the people who only want to be La ilaha illallah. They thought they understood it but it was not like that. So Qadbul Mu'min Baytullah. So that's a, a secret for people to understand that this house of Allah is where the mu'min are gathered in Mecca. So when we go to Mecca the house of Allah is where the mu'min and the believers are gathered and the reality of the Kaaba represents the believers. That's why Mecca is very busy, it has shopping centers because the believers are all busy with the, their dunya. Look they spent 400 billion dollars on soccer, we did describe that last night. Was it 400 billion dollars? It's a, a number that nobody has ever even heard before on a soccer, on a ball. So now you can see the condition of a Muslim nation that uh, they're not able to help anybody, they can't build any masjid, they can't do anything because they spend 400 billion dollars on a ball. So that has the reality of Mecca busy crowded and the souls that represent that reality. But then Qalbul Mu'min Baytullah. So if we find the biggest believer of Allah and go to his presence and in his heart because Allah created him and we put together the Kaaba. We fashioned the stones, we put the stones together and every now and then they even clean the stones and every now and then they put the khiswa and the, the fabric, all the signs that what? Men are making that and fixing it and cleaning that. But when you say the hadith again, the Qalbul Mu'min Baytullah, where is Allah's greatest believer? Then they understood that go to Medina to Munawwara. For there lies Allah's greatest believer, most purified believer, the one whom contains Qulini kuntum tuhibunullah fa tabiyuni yuhibukumullah. That if you go there, Allah will give you and dress you from Allah's divinely love. So what they found in Medina to Munawwar is the servant whom Allah created with His hands and blew into him of His, of his Spirit and made the holy presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And in that heart was the true worshipness of Allah and within that heart went on miraj, within that heart witnessed Allah to the two bow lengths are near that with all his hair witness that whoever has Mu'i Mubarak has the presence of Allah Define the presence of Allah His entire DNA went into the presence of Qawbu Qawsain Ya Adana where no angel can reach, no prophet has ever reached. That not an angel can reach to that reality, nothing in creation reached to that reality. Every cell and every fiber of the presence in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad witnessed La ilaha illallah. Not the Kaaba, the Kaaba witnessed nothing. That's why you go to Medina to Munawwara. 
Because within that heart, that body, that flesh, that hair, that beard was all in the presence of Allah wa Jalalihi, in the presence of La ilaha illallah and never left that presence because anything that enters into paradises never leaves that reality. So continuously in that presence of that holy body is in continuous presence of that reality at Qawba Qawsaini wa Adana. From every cell and every hair and every fiber and every DNA of the body of Prophet is emanating that reality and you enter into the precincts and you feel the presence of the Divinely Presence, you feel the presence of Allah you feel the presence of tranquility. Well you don't feel that in Mecca is a stone, so what are you going to feel from that? And that's what Allah wanted us to understand because this only ashiqeen would do that and understand that. They don't worship, they worship Allah As they don't worship the Kaaba, they're not worshipping Prophet When they go there and worship Allah they feel the presence through the heart and the light of Sayyidina Muhammad As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Is the reality of teleportation found in Isra wal Miraj? Sure. The reality of teleportation, the reality of portals and the movement through space and time and all of those. And I think we have the talks on the portals. So you go to nurmuhammad.com and the whole section on the portals is all of that. Sitting in a circle of zikr is described as a circle of paradise means in their scientific words those are portals. Means how can you create a portal to the heaven, make a circle and do zikr. And if you're in your home play the zikr, the circle will appear by the angels. They will circumambulate and make a circle above that association and immediately that's a portal from heaven. Put water out, put food out, put… Uh, uh, different things we used to put rock candy, the sugars out for healing because there's a tremendous amount of energy coming down. If Allah grants a permission make your du'a, the vibration is enough to take every type of difficulty, every type of sickness. At the same time the amount of energies that are coming people have to fortify themselves because shaitan won't be happy and begin to come after people. When you're with shaitan he's content with you. When you build yourself and become a potential enemy to shaitan he's very angry with you. So that's why when people are coming to tariqahs, coming to zikr they fortify themselves. They put their taweez, they keep their wudu, they understand their trainings and their teachings so that shaitan will be pushed back. Otherwise. You think you're just going to come to the light and shaitan leaves you, no he's, he's angered by you. He liked it when he had you under his leash but when you decide you're going to stand up to him he's now upset that, no, no you're not standing up, you get back down. And that becomes why Prophet described, this is the greatest jihad, the one whom wants to fight their inner demons and their inner reality. This is an immense battle. So they take their battle seriously, they wash, they keep wudu, they have their taweezes, everything about them is to be protected. They don't go near smoke, they don't go near alcohol, they don't go near all of these vices and these dangers because those will attack them. And they keep very limited exposure to people because of the negative energies of people. So it means all of these are real. We pray that Allah address us and bless us from these oceans of realities and we're getting close to Monday and the Laylatul Bara, Shabbat Bara and that Allah address us and bless us and do good deeds and feed people and, and give, uh, give opportunities for people, give out the guidance by sending links and teachings and People come to that guidance and that barakah be written for a servant. If one person comes 
to guidance as a result of your actions or even comes to Islam which we have coming daily through the channels and through the emails that people are coming, they're new to Islam because of the teachings. Then Allah described that if one person comes to Islam it's like all the sins of their reality were washed away and all the treasures of the world will be given. The, the gift in which is given of rewards is greater than the treasures of the entire dunya. So it means the immensity of how Allah stresses guidance and coming towards realities and coming towards Islam. Then imagine those whom they bring people into that reality and that's just by posting, clicking, posting, clicking. Whom Allah guides uh, will be guided inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.